Golden Head and Silver Head, written by Romina Jonas. It was 1935, and in the town of Ur lived a twin brother and sister named Golden Head and Silver Head. They were named that way because the brother's head was covered with gold and the sister's head was covered with silver. The two metal heads were inherited from their mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Precious. The Precious family lived on a rocky cliff off the Ur Ocean. Every day, Mr. Precious, who was a fisherman, would take his boat out to the sea, searching for large fish. One warm summer day, Mr. Precious went fishing, just like he had done every day for years. But this time, what he saw would change his life forever. Sitting in his boat, he cast out his fishing net into the vast ocean. He waited to see what he was going to catch. He waited and waited and became worried as there was no sign of fish. Suddenly, something heavy got trapped in his net and started fighting to get out. Mr. Precious was energized and hung onto the net and began pulling it in. After three hours of struggling back and forth, he was able to pull the net into the boat. What was in it? He wondered. What he saw was shocking, trembling, and with his eyes wide open, he looked at the big fish he had caught. Suddenly, the fish raised its head. Frightened, it looked at Mr. Precious, who was also shaking all over with fear. The fish opened its mouth and said, Mister, please let me go, please, please. When Mr. Precious heard the fish talking, he hit the floor and passed out. After a few minutes, he opened his eyes and thought that he must have been dreaming. But it was no dream. Yes, he caught a mermaid. Mr. Precious got on his feet and took a closer look at the mermaid. He noticed that this mermaid was a young boy and not a girl. A mermaid is supposed to be half female and half fish, but this was not a female. He then realized that he had caught a merman. He asked the merman, What is your name? My name is Joey, sir. Can you please put me back into the ocean? I got lost and fell into your net. Please, sir, my mom and dad will worry. I must go back home. Mr. Precious thought to himself that he could possibly sell Joey and make enough money to support his family for a long time. But having two children of his own, he felt sorry for Joey and his parents and said, I will release you on one condition. You must promise to come see my family and me every day at two o'clock in the afternoon to play with my children and teach them what you know. This way, they will become wiser and I will have some more free time to work and earn enough money to feed and clothe my family. Mr. Precious released Joey into the ocean. Joey smiled and waved to Mr. Precious and said, I know where you live. I will be there at two o'clock in the afternoon. Mr. Precious returned home that day without any fish, but with a great story to tell his family. The next day, the entire Precious family waited by the sea, hoping that Joey would keep his promise and come see them. At exactly two o'clock in the afternoon, a huge tide came in. And with the tide came Joey, smiling and singing. I kept my promise, Mr. Precious. I'm a man of my word and I'm here to meet your family. Mr. and Mrs. Precious and the kids were very happy to see Joey. It was like a dream come true. Joey started playing with the kids and began teaching them about the wisdom of the sea. Many years went by and every day exactly at two o'clock in the afternoon, Joey and the Precious family would get together. By then, Joey was considered a part of their family and as time went by, their love and respect for one another grew stronger and stronger. One day, Mr. Precious decided to take Mrs. Precious fishing with him. 
By now, Goldenhead and Silverhead were 13 years old and Joey was 21 years old. As Mr. Precious was fishing in the ocean, a dark cloud covered the sky and a raging storm violently hit the boat and turned it over. From then on, there was no sign of Mr. and Mrs. Precious. At two o'clock in the afternoon, Goldenhead and Silverhead saw Joey. Crying, they told Joey that their parents were missing and that they were afraid that they were dead or lost in the sea. Joey said, Don't worry, let me search the ocean. I will also ask all the other mer people to do the same. For the next three weeks, everyone looked high and low in the entire ocean, but there was no sign of Mr. and Mrs. Precious. The mer people promised Goldenhead and Silverhead that they would never stop searching until they found their parents and brought them home. Now Goldenhead and Silverhead were alone. The only person that they could rely on for help was Joey. Every day Joey met them by the ocean. They talked for hours about life and especially about how to manage the little money they had saved up from their allowances when Mr. and Mrs. Precious were still around. Joey also made sure that the kids went to school and did their homework. One day, when Joey came to meet the kids, he only saw Silverhead. Where is your brother? With a sad look on her face, Silverhead told Joey that Goldenhead had become friends with some bad boys. She was afraid he would do some stupid things. Joey frowned and he was very upset. He asked Silverhead to stay at home and wait for Goldenhead. Joey was going to wait there by the rocks as well. It was midnight when Goldenhead came home. Silverhead asked him where he had been and he told her to mind her own business. She asked him to see Joey as Joey wanted to speak with him. Goldenhead turned his back and went to bed telling Silverhead he had found some real friends. Within a few months Goldenhead and Silverhead ran out of money. Goldenhead began selling their furniture, jewelry, and anything he could get his hands on to make money. He then spent the money very foolishly on his terrible friends. Silverhead kept begging him not to do so, but Goldenhead ignored her. Joey was saddened by the situation, but he was helpless. All he had was good advice, to which Goldenhead refused to listen. Finally, Everything worth selling from the house was sold, and Goldenhead and Silverhead were left with nothing, not even food. Goldenhead told Silverhead he has a great idea. Why don't we remove and sell some of the gold off my head and some of the silver off your head? Silverhead shouted with fear, No, we will die if we run out of the precious metals on our heads. Goldenhead laughed at his sister and began scratching gold off the top of his head. He put the gold in a plastic bag and took it to a jewelry store. The jeweler was very impressed with the quality of the gold and asked Goldenhead where he found it. Goldenhead said there was more gold from where that came from. The jeweler weighed the gold and gave Goldenhead $1,000. He told him to bring more and he would buy it from him for lots of money. Goldenhead went to his friends. They went out partying and wasted the entire sum of money. When he came home, it was past midnight. He went directly to bed. The next day, Silverhead told Joey what had happened. Joey was furious, yet he didn't know what to do. From then on, Goldenhead kept removing gold off his head and selling it to the jewelry store. Silverhead kept begging Goldenhead to stop, but it was no use. Goldenhead had become selfish. He was hanging around with some horrible boys, doing terrible things and wasting his gold. By now, his dreadful friends had grown accustomed to a good living and fun time. They also had noticed that the gold on Goldenhead's head was almost gone. Now it was time for them to find a new friend, for Golden Head was soon going to be worthless to them. But before dumping him as their friend, they wanted to have one last fun time with him. This time, they convinced him to remove most of the gold off his head and sell it to the store. 
Golden Head, afraid of losing their friendship, agreed. Being fooled by his friends and with his friends' help, Golden Head began taking off almost all of his gold. As they were scratching the gold off his head, they noticed his head began bleeding, but they didn't say anything to him. They kept digging the gold out of his head until he started crying in pain. Then they took the gold and ran away and left him on the street bleeding. In severe pain, Golden Head began walking toward his house. He kept falling down and could only walk slowly. Sometimes he had to sit down for a long time before he was able to stand up again, but he kept walking. Silverhead went to meet with Joey at two o'clock in the afternoon. She noticed Golden Head waiting there. She ran toward her brother, put her arms around him, and began crying. She was so pleased to see him that she didn't notice his bleeding head until Golden Head began to weep. While holding him, she looked at him and saw blood coming down his forehead. She screamed in fear and said, Why? Why did you do this to yourself? I told you this would happen. Now what do we do? Please don't leave me. Please don't die. Silverhead looked at the sea and saw Joey riding on the big wave coming towards them. When he reached the seashore, he hugged and kissed Goldenhead and said, Welcome back, my little brother. Goldenhead, being so weak, fell on the ground. Silverhead sat down and took Goldenhead in her arms, and they both began crying. Joey said, Goldenhead, if you promise never to hang around bad boys and do bad things, I promise I will cure your head and will save your life. But you must first give me your word. Golden Head with tears in his eyes whispered, I promise. Joey dove into the ocean and called on all his mermaid and merman friends and relatives and told them to search the ocean floor and crevices for gold. As they were searching, Joey noticed a shiny rock in an underground cave. He swam towards the cave and found a huge piece of gold. He began breaking the gold off the rocks. While he was working hard, Joey's father swam towards Joey with a happy look on his face and told Joey that while he was swimming, he came across a very tiny island in the ocean. He saw an old man and a woman trying to rebuild a broken boat. When they saw him, they waved for help. Joey's father, having heard stories from Joey about Mr. and Mrs. Precious, approached the old man and woman and asked them if it was them. They said, yes, yes, it is us. We got lost in the storm. Our boat was damaged and we have been trying to fix it for a long time. All their mermaids and merman gathered material to fix the Precious's boat. Joey asked his father to help him dig out the rest of the gold he had found. He wanted to heal Golden Head's head before Mr. and Mrs. Precious saw their children. Both Joey and his dad dug up the gold and took it to where Golden Head and Silver Head were sitting. Golden Head leaned over to Joey and Silver Head to apply the gold onto his head. Flake by flake, layer after layer, they put the gold on Golden Head's head. With each layer applied, Golden Head felt better and finally was completely cured after all the gold he had wasted was back on his head. Joey and his dad were very happy and said to the kids, Wait here. We have a big surprise for you. Golden Head and Silver Head sat by the rocks waiting patiently. After an hour, they noticed a boat coming towards them with two mermen holding onto each side of the boat. As the boat got closer, Golden Head and Silver Head noticed their mom and dad smiling and waving anxiously. Joey and his dad swimming along and singing joyfully. Happily, they both jumped into the ocean and swam toward the boat. Joey and his dad helped them get into the boat to see their parents once again. Mr. and Mrs. Precious held Golden Head and Silver Head in their arms, tightly squeezing them and showering them with kisses. Joey and his dad were also hugging each other, smiling and laughing with joy. Finally, the family was reunited. That day, the entire Mer People colony had a huge celebration and made the Precious family an honorary member of their tribe. 
Nothing was said to Mr. and Mrs. Precious about Golden Head's bad behavior because Golden Head had promised not to do bad things ever again, and he kept his promise for the rest of his life. The end. <laughs>